Welcome back everybody. This video is going to be about predictive data analytics. We talked about it in the previous video, but now I'm going to go into more depth of what that is and why it is useful when it comes to machine learning. Like I said, machine learning is teaching computers to learn from data. Now, predictive data analytics is applying that to data we already have in order to predict the future. But why would we want to predict the future? Don't just think like, oh, in 2085, the world's going to end. Not that kind of stuff. We're talking about if someone comes to your site, what kind of products are they going to be interested in? What kind of restaurants are people interested in? We can look at historical data to make things more relevant to our users of our applications or to make our applications work more effectively. A lot of uses for this are recommendation engines. So you think you go and shopping at a website and then they have all these products that you haven't even looked at, but somehow they're recommending them to you. <laughs> and it's crazy because, you know, how did, how did they know that? Well, they can look at their trends in their data to figure out, oh, people who've looked at this product might be interested in this product over here. That is one good practical use. <laughs> Onyx. I gave him a yoga mat and he tore it into a thousand pieces. <laughs> that is one very good practical use of data analytics. And just so you know, analytics powers everything. So this is the foundation for all business decisions. So let's get started in talking about data analytics and predictive data analytics and defining the difference. So I said data analytics. Now data analytics looks at data and I drew this image in the previous video which just kind of represents you know a database or a data source of some sort and just imagine having tons of data in here. This is known as our data set. So why it's called that is because I don't know but it's just a set. <laughs> the data set contains a lot of historical data. Now that's kind of a key here we need what's known as historical data. And what that means is that what we are trying to predict is already known for this data set. So in the recommendation engine that I was talking about a couple minutes ago, if we have a bunch of historical data of people interested in this particular product, but we don't know if they're interested in another product, that doesn't really help us. We need to know that association between what they're interested in and other products they've bought. So that means this data has to come from the history. We have to be able to look at what people have already bought. Once we have that historical data set, we can use that on modern or future data. So think now, we have people on our website and they are feeding us a bunch of data. They're looking at all these products, they're making purchases, how do we take this data set and kind of use it on modern data to predict what kind of products they are interested in? That is the field of data analytics. And specifically, if we're talking predictive analytics, we're talking about predicting what people are interested in. But there's one thing I wanted to mention. This predictive word in predictive data analytics goes a little bit farther than just predicting the future. Because you can do data predictions with just historical data. You don't need to bring machine learning into it necessarily. For example, there's a lot of people who have a lot of talent and skill and knowledge in statistics. They can look at historical data and make predictions and probability calculations on what's going to happen in the future or currently. So what is this predictive part and why do we care about machine learning? The reason we care about machine learning is if you look at a data set such as this one, the reality is, is that it doesn't represent reality in its entirety. <laughs> so it's hard to draw reality. I was trying to draw it over here and then I was like, I'll just try to explain it. Reality is what's actually existing and what's going on, right? Data just represents reality. So as people buy things, we can figure out what they're interested in, and that is a representation of reality. If that makes any sense, and I'm not trying to get like weird here or anything, <laughs> I'm just saying data represents reality, but does it represent reality 
entirely? Does it represent all of reality? Does it capture the full essence of reality? No, it does not. It might only represent a portion of reality. And if I'm starting to sound crazy, just hold up. We might have a thousand people interested in a particular product in reality. Historically though, we have only logged, you know, a couple hundred purchases from these specific people or people similar to these people. So we don't know for sure what the people of reality are going to purchase and what they're going to be interested in. We may know what most of the people are interested in, but I can guarantee you there's one person out there who's completely unique and there's not really anybody good to compare them to. So that's where the predictive part comes in. When we have a data set and it does not represent reality entirely, let's just say this represents reality like 95%. <laughs> and just, I know it's weird quantifying how much something represents reality, but it, the, it, just trust me here. The reason it's like that is because we don't have data for every single possibility in the entire world in this data set. <laughs> then we could represent reality completely in our data set. The predictive part of data analytics is the 5%. What is the 5% of non-represented reality <laughs> going to do? And this process is something you can go through manually, but it's very tedious and using a computer, we can speed up the process and figure out the best model of reality. And we'll get into more of the fancy machine learning terms like model pretty soon. But this 5% is the part that requires predicting. That is where machine learning comes in. If you wanna make this more concrete, imagine we have a person and we don't have any data that really represents this person and what they might be interested in. Well, in that situation, we don't know what this person might do. They might be interested in buying a purse. They might be interested in buying a car. Or they might be interested in buying some candy. Machine learning essentially is going to go through all of the options of what this 5% of unrepresented reality is going to choose, and it's going to pick the most likely. We, as humans, might look at our historical data and not be able to see trends in our data, but a machine learning algorithm has like 4,000 eyes to look at the same data and can see trends that we normally would not be able to see. So it can pick what's most likely to happen in this situation, even though we don't have this specific person or someone similar to this person, it can go up a step and look at an overarching number of people and see what the majority of people that are sort of close to this person are likely to choose and say, oh, well, this person's likely to buy a purse. It seems kind of crazy right now and it's like, wow, that's kind of magical. And essentially that's what, you know, most people think of machine learning as. It's just, you know, this magical computer science thing you throw at software and makes it work cooler. <laughs> but this is really how it works. And once we start talking about decision trees, for example, you will see how this works in action and it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys can see the magic and the usefulness of machine learning. Please be sure to subscribe as that really helps out my channel. I'm almost to 50,000. I'm at like 49,000 something. So please help me out here guys and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.